Hey, this is not the final review of the new Fujifilm X-S10, but I'd like to go over some of the things that every single YouTuber missed about this camera. And nobody mentioned this, and uh, I've mentioned it to uh, Fujifilm specifically, and I get a lot of uh, emails on this on IS mode, and this is a feature that's not even found on the Fujifilm X-T4, which of course I happen to have right here. Here's the X-T4. And uh, that is that there are two new uh, image stabilization modes. So this does have a smaller, thinner IBIS stabilization and body image stabilization. By the way, uh, everybody kept asking, what about the stabilization on the new XS10 versus the Fujifilm X-T4? Well, it's only half a stop of difference. You have six stops of, uh, of, uh, six stops of IBIS on the X-S10 max. Depends on the lens and the condition. But you have six and a half stops on the X-T4. So half a stop is nothing big. But here's a feature, and it's only found on this Fujifilm camera only. I don't know if there will be a firmware update for the X-T4 for this. But we actually have two new options. It's grayed out right now because uh, I don't have um, auto ISO set, which I don't use auto ISO. You actually have uh, continuous plus motion and shooting only plus motion. On every other Fujifilm camera, including the $10,000 GFX100, you only have continuous and uh, you have uh, shooting only. Continuous plus motion and shooting plus motion. Shooting, uh, uh, shooting only and continuous operate the exact same way as it does every other Fujifilm camera, where uh, IBIS is engaged only at the full press of the shutter release and continuous, of course, is self-explanatory. But continuous plus motion means that it will understand if you're in auto ISO or program mode that uh, you have, depending on the lighting conditions, as lighting condition changes, it will change the settings such that it will not induce shake. Because a lot of people, a lot, I mean, I got thousands of emails over the years, people were uh, shooting at high shutter speeds using uh, continuous uh, uh, IBIS, and I know why people do that. This is because they love a nice steady image. That's all well and fine, but people didn't realize that uh, the same mechanism that reduces shake will also reduce, uh, will induce shake because an anti-shake mechanism is itself a shaking mechanism. And if you're using it when you're not supposed to be using it, it'll induce shake in your shot. And so this is a unique and wonderful feature that uh, I told Fujifilm that they should... Uh, you know, come up with something like this and said exactly, and no other YouTubers mentioned this. Nobody. I even did a web search and I was like, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. So that's a, a wonderful feature. Um, also, too, really nice and continuous how you actually have uh, eight frames per second. Now, the, uh, the shutter itself is uh, less noisy than that of the X-T30, but it is definitely nowhere near the stealthy quiet of that of the uh, X-T4. I mean, it's just not, obviously. So right now, uh, people were asking me about this camera. This is not a final review of the uh, of the uh, new uh, X-S10, but uh, the X-T30, excuse me, the X-T3, excuse me, is currently uh, 500 some dollars off, and so it's the exact same price as the X-S10, i.e. $1,000. Build quality too. Uh, I owned an XT30. It's really the only reason I sold off my XT30 is because I have so many Fujifilm cameras, and my rich buddy really wanted to buy it, and he loves his XT30 that I sold him. And I regret selling that. But the build quality on the XS10 is uh, some bit better than uh, that of the XT30, significantly so. And some bit better. I mean, that's uh, correct. Uh, explanation on the build quality between the two it is definitely better everybody keeps asking about weather sealing no camera is weather sealed however there is a foam at the joints of the magnesium chassis on uh, the xs10 here but no camera is weather sealed because 98 percent of all cameras that are destroyed by weather are destroyed by a long-term pervasive infiltration and uh, to put that in layman's terms humidity uh, less than 3 or 2% of cameras are actually destroyed by uh, inclement weather, you know, where the rain's pouring down and falling in the camera and someone ignorantly keeps the camera out in the rain. Everybody else with common sense obviously doesn't do that. So no camera is really weather sealed. Now on the ergos, the ergos are really, really nice. But I'll explain this, and it actually is... Uh, a, uh, oh, it's a double-edged sword. It's not really. It's a, a double bonus, if you will. Let me actually look at the ergos this way. The uh, battery 
uh, on this, unlike that of the X-T20 and uh, single card slot, of course, unlike that of the X-T20 and X-T30, which sits in parallel to the body, this sits in perpendicular to it, so it actually fits in the grip, but this also had to be done and it could not have been jammed in here uh, parallel to the body because unlike the X-T20 and X-T30, there is an IBIS mechanism, even though Fujifilm got the IBIS mech down a lot smaller. Uh, it serves two purposes. It, uh, they actually had to take the battery out further away from the center point of the body due to the IBIS mech, but that also means it fits in this grip and it gives the uh, XS10 some uh, extremely uh, nice uh, ergonomics. As you can see up here, let's take a close look in. I uh, shoot everything aperture priority. I'm still testing it. Obviously, this is not a final review. ISO button, Q menu button. You can even reassign the recording button, which I've done. Um, other people were uh, asking about uh, video functionality on this camera. And uh, let's go into a video menu. Want to know if you were able to get uh, 60p at uh, 4K in movie mode, and that's not possible. You can do uh, 30p and uh, 200 megabits per second in uh, 4K. So no, you cannot do. You, might, you can see here it's uh, grayed out, so you can't uh, do 50 or uh, 60p. Those two options are of course uh, grayed out. Menu system is uh, nearly identical, just like every other Fujifilm. However, button assignment is different. Um, I love the fact, just like the X-T4, you can set a quadrant for touch autofocus with my eye up next to the viewfinder. I'm actually able to use my uh, thumb in my left hand, since I'm uh, left eye dominant, and I have my left eye up to the viewfinder. I'm able to use my thumb for autofocus point selection, but uh, here's uh, the assignable features. Let me hold down the display back button to show you. You still have, even though there aren't an, a, an enormous amount of dials on the a XS10 like there is on the X-T4. You have a lot of assignability. Um, actually, I didn't change that in record, excuse me, I take that back, changed everything else. ISO button, I've uh, kept the same. I love that dedicated ISO button, Q menu button. You can actually change the view mode if you want. I can't see anybody doing that. From the factory, it actually uh, came that way. You actually have touch swipe functionalities here, up, down, left, and right. And then you can actually uh, change your auto exposure lock button or your AF on button. And also too, you could uh, change the default button for uh, your assignable dial right here. There we go, focus. There actually is a really nice AF on button. Let me tilt this light up out of the way. Let me uh, pop it up here you can see it. Basically the same as uh, on that of the uh, X-T30. So there's the uh, pop-up flash. There are no front buttons on the uh, front of uh, the body. I did uh, put on the uh, 16 to 55, which is incredibly fat at the base lens, and I did not have any knuckle scrape. I mean, you might have some giant gorilla fingers, maybe, and uh, your knuckles might scrape, but uh, this is the 2314, but testing out the 16 to 55 2 8, I did not have any knuckle scrape. There is not a leaf spring shutter release on this like there is on the X-H1. You would not have expected that, but it is a lot quieter than that of the X-T30. Um, even though this is not a final review of the camera, I wanted to give a precursory examination of it. I would actually consider this the finest uh, travel and walk around camera. The peaking finest uh, travel and walk around camera of any camera, whether it be Nikon or Fujifilm or otherwise. A perfect upgrade and replacement to the uh, X-T30. Like I said, it's made better. Uh, 8 frames per second max. You do have IBIS, which makes this an awesome, inexpensive camera for sticking adapted lenses on, so you could do low-light photography. And still, they'll still have in-body image stabilization. You actually have an assignable control wheel here, which, since I shoot an aperture priority, I have set for, as you can see here, exposure compensation. Um, i trying to think of anything else. You see, we'll turn the dial here. That's uh, for a setting film simulation, but you can change this... Uh, dial to uh, be whatever it is you like. You could change this to exposure compensation, but I, I can't see anybody wanting to do that. But maybe somebody does want to do that. You never know what somebody's ergos are. They might be left-handed. I mean, I'm left eye dominant and right-handed, so someone might be backwards and backwards for me, and they might want to change that to exposure compensation. You can set it to uh, anything. Let me hold down the display back button, and then go over. Whoops. Go over to page two. 
And let's see your options uh, for that uh, function wheel right here, so far as what you can set. Um, default, our exposure comp, when set to manual, let's leave it at default. Um, actually, even better than the AF on button of the XT4, which I'll bring over here, the positioning, and of course it depends on how large your hands are, I guess. There's a lot of variables and ergos. I actually like the AF on button on uh, this, the XS10. Better than that, since it's too far out of the way of that of the uh, X-T4. Obviously, there are, are a whole lot more dials on the X-T4, but I basically never use them. But I have them set to C for ISO and uh, shoot aperture priority. Of course, I have a vertical grip on this. These take completely different batteries. Um, set the X-T4 over here. But uh, I've actually been incredibly surprised about uh, the XS10. I was not, basically, I don't care what the name on the front of the camera is. It says XS10. This is basically the XT40. I mean, I, I don't care that it says XS10. Um, the ergos are completely different. It does have a pop-up flash, single card slot, same conventional battery as found on the XT3 and uh, XT30 and XT20. Um, so that's the reason why I, I think I wasn't uh, expecting as much. And I'm actually incredibly pleased and happy with this camera. I'm still doing a lot of testing with it and answering all your questions. Obviously so, of course, just like the X-T4, uh, we have a fully articulating display. Yes, the camera is made in China. You didn't expect it to be made in Japan, did you? Yeah, doesn't matter. But it is made better than the X-T30. Yeah, currently, the X-T3 is on sale for the same price as this. This camera's 1000 The X-T3 is currently... I don't know how long the sale is going to last. It's currently also $1,000. But um, the touch to autofocus point selection. I also do. I checked uh, the buffer depth on this, and I'm running a fast card, a 300 megabit per second UHS-2 SanDisk card in this. Buffer, buffer depth is actually a whole lot better than that on the X-T30. Uh, That's an important uh, mention. You have all the same uh, flash TTL capabilities of this as you do any other Fujifilm camera, of course. And uh, I think that answers most of the questions that I've been receiving about this camera. I've uh, so far been incredibly surprised, more so than I was expecting. I knew basically, regardless of the fact that it's an XS10, that it is basically the X-T40. And I knew, of course, the reason why it has this deep ergo grip, which is, by the way, really, really nice, is because the battery has to be brought perpendicular to the body because the IBIS mech is not uh, not found in the X-T20 or X-T30, but it is here, and so that does not allow uh, room for the battery to sit in parallel to the camera body, but that gives it its nice ergos, and I think people are really, really going to like this camera. So anyway, here's the answer to some of your questions about the the uh, XS10, and uh, let me know if you have any questions on anything. Continue to test stuff on it, and thanks for watching. Okay, goodbye.